Now this needs to be uh, investigated and explained because as we've just seen we're dealing with uh, week 51, 2,492 people dying more than we would expect. Less because there was less deaths registered in the, in the last week of the year. Um, so how would we investigate this? Well, this is not uh, rocket science. In fact, this is ABC of, uh, of medical research, really. Uh, how do we investigate the cause of excess deaths? Well, in 1965, the English statistician Sir Austin Bradford Hill, working with Richard Doll, uh, together they invented the clinical trial. They did the first ever proper randomised uh, controlled clinical trial in the UK, looking at tuberculosis and how effective it was when it was treated with uh, streptomycin. Very conclusive uh, data. So they invented that. And by looking, using these, these what we call Bradford Hill criteria, uh, Bradford, Sir Austin Bradford Hill and, and uh, Sir Richard Doll both uh, together identified that smoking caused lung cancer back in the 50s. Before that, it wasn't known. This is how powerful that uh, th this tool is. So we could use it now. Um, it's a standard tool. So it looks for the strength of the association. The larger the association, the more likely that it is causal. So if something is causing these excess deaths and um, there's a large correlation, then it's likely that the relationship is causal between whatever is the cause is and the result, which is the excess deaths. Consistency or reproducibility. Consistent findings in different persons in different places. Of course, this is exactly what we're seeing. It looks like whatever's causing the excess deaths in Australia is also causing the excess deaths in the UK because the, the, the 11, whatever it is, 12,000 miles apart, um, it looks like there's some common factor here. So, so there's consistency or reproducibility appears to be there. Um, specificity, no other likely explanation. Now, this one is a bit clouded. There are possibly a range of explanations for the excess deaths, but it is possible to isolate out factors. Another Austin Hill, Bradford, Bradford Hill criteria is temporality. So the effect has to occur after the cause. So whatever is, so the, the, the excess deaths is the effect. The cause has to be something that's already occurred before the excess deaths occurred. So first we must have the cause, then we must have the effect. And again, that indicates that a relationship between whatever we find is, is, uh, is causal. Sometimes there's a delay. For example, after uh, we know that asbestos exposure causes uh, a, a cancer of the pleural membranes, causes mesothelioma, but the, the delay there can be 20 years. So we need, might need to look back for a few months or a year or two, but um, is there a temporal correlation with a factor that's caused these excess deaths? And you see, by the time we take all these things into account, it really narrows the field down quite a bit for what it could possibly be. Biological gradient, is there a dose-response relationship? So a greater exposure to the core should have greater incidence of the effect. Or indeed, 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 if something is protective, there should be a lower effect the more of the cause that is given. So things could be protective as well, but that's not what we're seeing, unfortunately, with the excess deaths. We're not seeing a protective effect. We're seeing a deleterious effect. So the biological gradient with what? And again, by the time they add in that factor, that's going to cut the possibilities down again. Plausibility is the plausible mechanism between cause and effect. So whatever this cause is, does it make sense that there is a... Uh, a mechanism that could be causing it? Is there a reasonable sort of pathophysiological mechanism that could cause something? Coherence between epidemiological findings and laboratory findings. Now, laboratory findings can often be done very often using animal studies. In fact, on, on this very channel, we've talked about animal studies and, for example, inflammatory changes uh, that occur. Uh, we've done that several times. Sometimes it's possible to do uh, experiments. Um, again, again, occasionally it's possible to appeal to experimental evidence. Experiments have been done on the population. And indeed, you could argue that experiments are being done on the population as we speak. 
could we get data from these uh, contrived or we could argue natural experiments. Why isn't this being done and collated with all these other Bradford Hill criteria? Analogy. Analogies or similarities between the observed association and any other associations. So people that are dying now, for example, if they're dying of uh, one of the things people are dying now, of course, is heart disease. Are there other things that can cause heart disease that can cause similar manifestations to what we're seeing? Uh, there are. There are. Uh, these can be taken in context with the other Bradford Hill criteria and uh, causes could be isolated if only this work was being done by our authorities. Reversibility, um, if you take away the cause, the effect may go, but this does depend on whether any permanent damage has been caused. So if there's any permanent damage to tissues... For example, if there was damage to the myocardium because part of its blood supply had been cut off and you take away whatever caused that, I'm afraid that heart damage is not going to regenerate because brain cells and heart cells don't regenerate. You get scar tissue formation, but you don't get mitotic regeneration of the damaged tissue. So sometimes the effects can be reversible. Other times, tragically, they are not and when people find out, the health authorities find out what's causing the excess deaths and the factors that are causing the excess deaths, uh, let's hope that not too many are caused by, or the pathology is not causing permanent damage in those of us that uh, still remain. So there we are, World Health Authorities. Can I uh, advocate the Bradford Hill criteria to you? It's a new idea. I don't expect you to be fully up to date. It only goes back to 1965, but it's just a suggestion. So, so unfortunately, um, there are still excess deaths in all age groups in many countries and um, I am not satisfied with the explanations we're getting and I'm not satisfied with the sheer deafening silence, to be quite honest, that we're getting from politicians and from our health authorities. The silence is not acceptable. But thank you for watching.